yeah, today I'm going to talk about bringing uh, GitHub data into Copilot using graph connectors. Uh, very quick uh, about myself. Um, my name is Lee Ford. Uh, I'm a developer by trade. Also like to do a bit of coding on the on the weekend. Um, and yeah, I'm based in the Birmingham, I'm based in Birmingham in the UK, not in Alabama. Um, and there's my socials if you want to uh, follow along. So let's get started. So the agenda, um, very simple. We've got uh, graph connectors. Quickly cover what they are, how they work. Uh, then we'll go over the solution that I've sort of um, architected, I guess, um, and then we'll get into a demo and, and a bit of sort of uh, if we've got time, uh, quick look into the code. So uh, quick 101 on graph connectors. Um, graph itself uh, only has sort of uh, data that's based on your own files, your own emails, um, calendar, those sort of things. That's your sort of base ground data that's, that's in Microsoft Graph. Um, obviously, if you want to have external data, so from external data sources, then you need to bring that in uh, via a different method. And one way is to use graph connectors. You can use things like API plugins and stuff like that for, for another day. but. Um, so we're going to talk about bringing external data into graph. So it's kind of sits alongside um, things like your emails and stuff like that. So one important note is it's un unlike, um, say, calling an API, you're effectively ingesting that data into uh, Microsoft Graph. So it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, co it's a copy of the data. So ultimately, it's it's up to you to make sure it's kept up to date and any changes are reflected and 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 and, and such you're not pulling down the live data as such um, so there's two types of connectors um, first one is the built-in connectors these are off the shelf kind of a turnkey solution in, in a way um, you um, you can choose from so many i think there's uh, salesforce is one um, it's sort of the, the usual suspects are there. However, if it's anything else, then you need to use custom connectors. Um, and, and ultimately, you can use that with any data source, as long as you can programmatically get that data out of wherever it is and put it uh, in, into a format that you can then put into a graph connector, then then you can use whatever you want. So um, the, the, only, the only difference here is the, the built-in one is there's no infrastructure. You don't need to code anything. You can kind of just almost click a few buttons and you're done, whereas um, Graph Connect is a little bit more involved, uh, custom Graph Connect, should I say, um, you obviously need to write some code and put it somewhere and, and, and be able to uh, to access it. So, um, wait, isn't there already a Graph Connect? Now, I, I, before I started this, I did have a quick look and there is one, but it's one, it's in preview and two, it doesn't really do what I want it to do, um, where, um, it, it was uh, kind of the, the bits that I'm interested in GitHub, but maybe as a developer, aren't necessarily the bits the the building connector is actually surfacing. So um, hence why I, I built this. Um, so my use case is that I want to be able to pull through um, issues, pull requests, commits, um, and be able to bring it through and and kind of report on it, but also um, use Copilot to actually help me. Uh, along the way. So in this example, I'm like, okay, what issues have we got open? Okay, cool. Issue number eight, like, how do I fix it? Um, you can't really see the whole conversation on the slide, but ultimately it goes through a, like a 10 step process of, like, okay, this is the issue you've got, this is how you fix it. So um, it's kind of a, a way of kind of looking through your GitHub issues with a copilot to help you go, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I didn't think of that. Rather than having to like copy and paste errors into copilot and, uh, um, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of, yeah, just a bit more natural, I guess. Um, so one other benefit of obviously using a connector for this, uh, rather than just saying, oh, just access GitHub and have a look yourself, obviously is um, not everyone has access to uh, GitHub or maybe they don't have access to all the repositories that the organization uh, has. So you, by this, you can kind of have a hands-off approach to, so someone can visibly see, oh, yeah, we've got so many issues or got so many pull requests, whatever, but they're not actually... Um, having to uh, sort of directly interface with them. They can kind of see it from a distance. So um, very quickly, I'll go through the solution overview here. So we've got four components, really. So the main one being GitHub. So that's where the data is. Uh, now, I've done it a little bit differently to uh, some of the, the connectors where a lot of connectors will scrape the, 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 the source data. And that's um, ultimately what the built-in connector for 
um, GitHub is doing, where it's, you log in with an account, a service account, which I'm, I'm a massive fan of myself, um, and you effectively just scrape uh, or crawl through GitHub and pick everything out. Whereas what I've by doing it this way with a webhook is I can choose which repositories I actually want to set this up on, maybe one or all of them, um, and also which type of events for which repository. So I might say, oh yeah, for this repository, I want everything. For this repository, maybe I only want pull requests. So um, by doing it with a webhook, you've got a bit more granular control. So the way it works is we have GitHub, that sends a webhook, that sends it to an Azure Functions, which is where my code's running. My Azure Functions takes the data, puts into the uh, the schema format that I'm using for the connector. So, you know, what, what um, you know, what fields am I, uh, have I got in my uh, external items they're called in Graph? Um, and then that gets sent up to Microsoft Graph. Once it's stored there, after a few minutes, I can then use Copilot to query that, um, that, that data. And, 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 and in this scenario, I've kind of wrapped it inside an agent just so it's a bit more focused on this task. Um, so, Without further ado, let's get to the demo. Um, so um, now if I go to Copilot, you can see I've had a previous conversation here. Um, I'm just going to start a new chat. Um, and I'm just, so this is a, an agent called Developer Assistant I've just made. Um, and in here, I'm just going to say, uh, can you tell me about let me type properly, the open issues we have? OK. And hopefully, being a live demo, it's going to behave and tell me what it is. OK, cool. All right. So it's gone through and it's told me there's two open issues and it kind of explains in a bit more detail what they are. Obviously, I've got links back to them so I can click through and bring up the, uh, the issues. Um, and also it's additionally said, oh, yeah, there actually also there is a pull request for issue number seven um, that's open. And obviously, I've got all the links here so I can, I can go through it. OK. All right, so then I can go, uh, how do we go about fixing issue number eight? OK, and now it's going to go through and it's going to give me a load of stuff. I don't know anything about Python, so whether this is accurate or not, you're asking the wrong person. Let's assume it is. OK, so then I can then take these steps, go off and do that fix and obviously, you know, uh, hopefully fix that issue. So um, I've got that much, obviously we're running low on time, so I don't want to go in, kind of keep asking it questions, but you can kind of see the, the benefit here. Now, obviously, I've only got a couple of issues here and, a, and one pull request. If I've got, you know, hundreds of pull requests and hundreds of issues, you can see how quite quickly it could be quite powerful to say, oh, yeah, can we like organize them in this way? Or what's the most uh, pressing ones or, you know, whatever it is, because um, I think sometimes with some repos, you end up with hundreds of issues and you just don't even know where to start. This is the intent of this is to obviously make that a bit easier to uh, to, to 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 look at. So how does it work? Um, I've kind of shown you the um, sort of the overview, but I'll just quickly go through. So it's very straightforward. Um, we have a webhook. Um, so I've done it at repo level. Now you can do it at organization level. So you have an organization, you know, hundreds of repos in. You can configure it in one place and then all the repos will then Every time something happens, like someone opens a pull request or someone opens an issue, they will then get pushed through into the uh, into this webhook. So if I look at this webhook. Oh, I need to sign in. One sec. Hey, there we go. Um, I, I'm using a dev tunnel at the moment because my code is running locally on my machine. Um, obviously, if this is production, it would be pointing at you know an Azure Functions URL or something. Um, and obviously. What I do in here, I choose the types of events that I want to have. So there's, there's, I've set this connector up for pull request pushes and commits. So anytime there's a commit, a pull request, or a um, push for commits, um, an event, we get a notification. So um, if I look at the recent deliveries, you can see um, we've had things like pull requests opened. You can see this request was sent with all this data in. Um, and obviously, I take, I cherry pick the data that I need. We'll get into that in a second, um, and then push that into graph. So it's very straightforward from a from a GitHub point of view. I'm worried about having uh, unattended accounts, scraping GitHub, and periodically, you know, how often do you want to do that, and all that. It's just as soon as the event happens, boom, we get a notification through a webhook, 
can we put it in graph? So within 10 minutes of something happening, Copilot knows about it. Anyway, right, so that's it from a kind of setup point of view. If I just quickly go through the code before we finish. So um, I use your function just because it's a bit easier to, I, I think, visualize because you have to worry about setting up HTTP servers and God knows what. We're just literally setting up a, uh, a bit of code. So straightforward, we have a uh, HTTP request coming in. Um, and then I, I basically have a, uh, a hand, a, an event handler that I've created. And depending on which type of event we receive, we handle it in a, in a certain way. So, for example, um, with issues push, push, I have event handlers. Any other type of event, uh, for the for the purposes of this demo, I, I just haven't bothered. I just say no, we don't we don't support that event hook. Uh, sorry, that event in that webhook. You need to yeah not do that. Um, so, for example, let's just go through one. I don't think we have time to go through all of them, but let's say I pick pull request for example. So a pull request will come through, um, and the first thing we do is obviously we get a graph client, um, and we make sure that the connector is is existing and and um, the schemas um, there. I'll get through that in, in a second, um, and then effectively we create an external item, and then we push or we put the external item in, in into graph. So I'll quickly show you how to create an external item. So this is a, uh, a External, a graphic external item, and it contains kind of three things really. We've got the ID of the uh, of, of the external item, which is obviously needs to be unique. And I just use the ID of the pull request rather than coming up with something. Um, and then you've got the access control list, who can see this item in uh, you know, when they're when they're using graph or whatever. Um, and then obviously you've got the properties, and this is where we start tying up the data that's in the pull request to the, the the properties now these ones here are sort of the default ones that come with the graph so you know last modified created date time uh you know who who created the event that sort of stuff uh the item should i say not the event and then these are additional ones that i've then added on so things like status images um and repository names um that just help copilot a bit uh give it a bit more uh of an idea of what it's looking for um and I use the same external item schema for all different types. The only thing that really changes is the is the content. To be honest with you, everything else is kind of the same, and obviously the title that indicates that it's a pull request. Um, so if I quickly look at the 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 schema, um, sorry, this one, the external item schema, you can see in here what we have. We've got the title, the URL, and like I say, this a lot of these are built-in ones, and then I have sort of the custom ones down here. Um, and you know, this is whether it can be queried and you know, comes up in searches, that sort of stuff. And also aliases. So if someone's using the word tags rather than labels, uh, it will still work. Um, and then finally, um, the last bit is the is the graph. Um, so I've just got a graph client, and all it does is creates an external connection if it doesn't if one doesn't exist. So first time run. It'll go and go, oh, yeah, external connection doesn't exist. Let's create one. And then it creates the schema. And the schema is what I just showed you with the definition of what the uh, what, what the what the items look like. Um, and that's about it, really. I don't think there's anything else in here that's uh, worth going through. Obviously, the put, put the item, that's when we're either updating or creating a, a new item. Um, so obviously, things like you know, we create, let's say, a pull request. Uh, in GitHub, that then creates it in here, but then say someone closes it or merges it or whatever, that then also then comes through this and gets updated so, that, so we don't end up with duplicates. Uh, it's still the same, uh, still the same, uh, same thing. And I think that is it. Uh, let me just go back to my my slide. I think, yeah, that's it. Um, the only thing is. Um, that's where the sample will be. I opened a pull request two or three days ago. It's still pending. So like you can see the code, it's there. It's just not in the main branch. Um, but I'm sure someone will get to that at some point. So yeah, that's it really. Mm -hmm.